Okay, we have the fraction um, a third. And the fraction that we're looking for is equivalent a fraction to that. So if we try and think of equivalent fractions, we would have um, three ninths. Uh, we would also be able to multiply by, that was it, multiply top and bottom by two, giving us two sixths. So to make equivalent fractions, we multiply the same number on the top or the bottom. Uh, but then we also know something else about these equivalent fractions, that the denominator minus the numerator is going to give us the value 8. So um, what sort of uh, number could we get there? Well, 4 twelfths, for example. The denominator minus the numerator would give us um, 8 as a difference. Is there any way we can go from the fraction a third to the fraction 4 twelfths? Well, yes, if we divide, multiply top and bottom by 4, we would get the equivalent fraction 4 twelfths. And if I take the bottom number, the denominator, minus the numerator, I would get the answer 8. So the fraction that I'm looking here for question A is 4 twelfths. Then for part B, it says the value of the fraction is 2 thirds. And the numerator, uh, no, the denominator is 4. So the denominator is 4 larger than the numerator. So the denominator is 4 plus n. 4 plus n. The denominator is whatever the numerator is plus 4. And then we start to think again of equivalent fractions here. Multiplying top and bottom by 2, I would get 4 sixths. If I multiplied top and bottom by 3, I would get 6 ninths. Uh, if I multiplied top and bottom by 4, I would get 8 twelfths. And then again, if we look here, 8 twelfths we can see that the denominator is four larger than the numerator. So here we found our fraction. So it's just to plow through different fractions by doing the same thing to the numerator and the denominator until your clues work out. So the fraction that they're looking at here for B is 8 twelfths. Then C, the value of the fraction is 3 fifths. And the product of the denominator and numerator. So product means multiply. Denominator times numerator equals 60. Well, if we look at equivalent fractions again here, if we multiplied top and bottom here by 2, we would get 6 tenths. And then if we multiply the denominator 10 by the numerator 6, we would get 6 times 10 equals 60. So the fraction that we're looking for in this case is actually 60. Then we get to the tricky one, where they really expect you to do some thinking. The value of this fraction is larger than 1.16 and less than 1.18. And the difference between the, tellera, the denominator and the numerator, so denominator minus numerator is 2. Uh, in fact, it's got to be the other way around. It's got to be that the numerator minus the denominator is 2. Because we can see from the decimal here that we must have a larger number on the top of the numerator than we've got on the bottom. And we know that we've got to have numbers that have a difference of 2. So let's think about some of the numbers we could have then. We could have 3 over 1. But that's going to give us an enormously big number. It's going to give us 3. So that can't be the answer. What else could it be? It could be uh, 4 over 2, 5 over 3, 6 over 4, 7 over 5, 8 over 6. So you start with a reasonable number here as a numerator and then you test it. I think it's probably not going to be any of these lower numbers. Let me test and see what 8 divided by 6 actually ends up being. 
using my division technique. Sixes into eight go one time and two left over. Sixes into twenty go three times and two left over. And so we're going to get 1.33333333. So that is too big. So I need two numbers that are even closer to each other. Well, let's take another guess then. 10 divided by 8. So I'm jumping a few, or you could jump a few steps here. Um, 10 divided by 8 is probably going to be too small as well. So let me try 12 divided by 10. 12 divided by 10 is really easy. That's going to give me 1.2. And that is still too high. So I need a number bigger than 12. So the simplest thing to do to try these numbers out is to, is to try ones that are um, as close as possible. What about 14 divided by 12 then? What will that give me? Well, 12, um, 12s into 14 go one time. That gives me two left over. Uh, 12s into 20 go one time, and that gives me uh, 8 left over. And then 12s into 80 go, how many times? What times 12 is 76? 7, no, not 70, what's 12 sevens? 70. 12 sevens. 10 sevens are 70, so 11 sevens must be 77, and 12 must be 84, but we've only got 80, so 11 times. So, um, so 12 into 80 goes... Come on, guys, wake up. So here we get uh, 12 sixes of 72. And then we've got some left over again. But we don't need to worry because now we see that with this fraction, we are at a value of 1.16. And between 1.16 and 1.17. We could check that this is the only value by doing uh, 16 fourteenths as well and proving that that one is actually too low. So that's how to do that question.